Never get rid of your rider for your slider. You better, y'all better get up on game. Sky was spitting surreal. A lot of y'all got fuck to the fucking capacity. Walk up and all your shit was gone. Your TV off the wall. Your bed. Your clothes. Your shoes. And all your bank accounts. Clear. Trying to figure out how the fuck you was on the floor from the bed. But in Sky's case, he ain't fucking spitting the capacity. Because he didn't think what he was working. You, you, bow. It, well, it can't even do that. But anyway. From Black Ink Crew season finale is a whole bunch of fuckery. Okay. And the fuckery comes on Kwani and Puma. I don't even, I don't, at this point, I don't even blame Caesar and Duchess one bit, and I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. We get, but we, we're gonna get to that point when we get to that point. Um. Let's go to the beginning of the episode. But before we get there, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. I am building another channel titled LOL is J Thorell. So watching this video and watching all of my videos, go over to LOL is J Thorell, which is my new branding company I'm going to be putting on YouTube. Will be. Please subscribe, like, comment. I'm going to be, going to be posting my first video over there. I'm going to get things post it and get things set up so you can go subscribe, post videos and everything. So I'm excited to be building two channels at once. All my reviews and entertainment will be over here. All my other blogs, rants, I guess comedy, like the comedy stuff that I would do. Like stuff I would come up with would be all over in that channel. Building over there. It's, um, advice, all that stuff you need will be over there. And I'm going to put my love and hip hop reviews. Love and Hip Hop Atlanta review over there because it's my first time talking about Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. So I'm going to put that over there and leave everything else over here as far as entertainment. Please check out my um my entertainment blog. I'm getting ready to post some new stuff maybe either tonight after I put these videos up or maybe tomorrow when I get up. I have a whole lot of stories. I've been late on the tea, but your boy got the tea. So check out my entertainment blog at www. We believe, you know, www. Element of J. Darrell. Dot we believe dot com backslash blog. I have the link down below. Please follow me on all social media sites. And all the info will be in the more info box below. So I'm going to need you to check that out. And that being said, if you want to be featured on my um, entertainment blog as the elements, whether you want to be a model or with the, as far as male and female accomplishments, I'm all about supporting the next up and coming artist, the next up and coming successful. Please hit me up at jdurrell.reality at gmail.com. Leave your info there. Leave me three photos. And I will post an article about you on my entertainment blog. Share the link with you so you can share it with your followers and your supporters. And I will also share it here on, on YouTube as well as all my social media sites. So with that being said, let's get into this season finale because it was all of that. Now let's get back to let's get back to your stuff. We're not gonna do that. Um, at the beginning of the episode, we kick the episode off with Sky being released. We see Teddy, we see uh Teddy sitting there waiting on uh Sky to come back out, and this time he's contemplating on taking the relationship to next another level. And it's the same person that said he would never get married, never be in a relationship, but now he's still in Sky and. For a nigga to fly all the way from one side of the world to the other side of the world, there has to be a connection. There has to be some type of love. There has to be some type of, mm, and he, it has to be something because a person like Teddy is not just going to do that. So, me, seeing Teddy in this element, 
I like it, and I hope he keeps going, and maybe sometime changes my mind about being married, and I think this whole diet and take thing, I hope it lasts, I hope it's not something that we get with this reality show, just to give them something else to talk about, just to give them a storyline, and then end up breaking up and doing this, that, we don't need another situation with Sky, let's get on this fuck nigga right now. Uh, Sky tells us after meeting with Teddy, she jumps on Teddy, all those things, and she tells us that the nigga she's been dating and gave her heart to, the same motherfucker that she done choked on peaches with, the same motherfucker who's been in her tub that she spent all his money for to get the producers to drop her and meet him to get out of jail, has robbed his, robbed her ass dead to the account. The account has been overdrawn, the apartment it's just, he even had a, a bitch in the apartment. Excuse my language. He had a bitch in the apartment. And you tell the bitch is nasty because the chair was motherfucking left dirty. Hair was everywhere. And the bitch left her vagina vibrator in the tub. That's how you know she's nasty. And then, how you know he's stupid? Bitch, you left your motherfucking insulin, your medicine, something that you need to survive when your sugar get low. You left it in the bitch's apartment. Who you fuck around with. Not only did the bitch clear out and rob the fuck out the bitch, the bitch was still living in her apartment, had a dirty rat tail bitch in the apartment, having sex, living off of her. And you left your insulin and your clothes. So, how dirty can you get the bitch guy? You got your ass on this. He played the fuck out of you. Loved you. Made you. Whatever he, whatever he gave you must have been working. Must not have been the painting. But whatever it was, it had to be working for you to drive your ass all the way to get this nigga out of jail. Pay for a room. Fuck this nigga. And you say his situation, what, what the situation was supposed to be at the A and in the dot in the period. But he robbed your ass. His painting must, must not have been clean, but, um, he got you. So, yeah. I'm like, and then so she takes Dex there to finish off the story. Now she takes Dex to the apartment. Find out the nigga been staying in the apartment. The air condition's still on. Uh, been sleeping in, in his girl's bed. Left his clothes there. Fucking had another trick there. So she started out his clothes and he's answering and saying, fuck you. It's over. It's done. And she goes on to say, never get rid of your rider for a slider. Never get rid of your rider. Ow! But it's slider. And I was like, that's game. A bitch play you like that, but you still woman enough to give us game and to keep us up on game. Like, bitch, don't make the same mistake I did. Mm -hmm. I should have been rocking with Teddy. And now I'm going to do, I'm going to be rocking with the Teddy here. The grand, Teddy Graham. But anyway, we're done with that storyline. So. Yeah. Um. Mari Pope, that's what it is. Um. Oh shit, baby mama. Come in with the DNA result. And in the case. Uh. Oh shit. Son. Oh shit, you are 99% the baby's father. And then the motherfucker dropped the bar and he done lied because she done, he done pissed off, he, she done pissed him off, so he gonna put up a fake paternity test to piss her off, call her all kinds of hoes, he ain't the baby's father, he ain't this, he ain't that. Just to come out and say, bitch, you know what, that's the home test, we gonna do this legit, we gonna do, do this DDC. We're going to call Dancer, Renee, Johnson, and we're going to get this handle, okay? We're going to get we gonna get to the bottom of this because I know what was going in and out of my coochie. I know who I squirted on. I know who nutted in me. So, therefore, I know who my baby's father is. I'm not that trashy. I may be a baby mama, but I ain't that trashy. So, don't you ever do that to me. Oh, shit. So, she was pissed off. 
Oh, she comes like, you know what? I did it out of spite. I did this, this, that. She goes off to cry. You made me do that. I did. I know I'm not a hoe. You made me do You think you wasn't hurt me. You were trying to get a Now you got to do that. Apologize to me. Apologize to your son. I'm like, here we go. I came with the situation, but oh shit, get it together. Oh, she goes to the PO, finish off the tattoo, that was a little bit evenish for my little Christianity, but y'all can have that little situation, because I don't do demons. Yeah. So I on to the fool of fucking motherfucking nickel tree. On with the fool of fucking nickel tree. On to the fool of fucking motherfucking nickel tree. And I'm only doing it because it's my life. But, okay, we get to the situation at hand, we've been wondering what happened, where did it happen at, how did it happen, and what led up to the happening. When we get the video on Instagram, on YouTube, that Duchess post, way before we even thought there was going to be another season of Black Week. And but when we left off on Black Ink Crew, they were still cool. They had they made each other, marriage and everything. So we were like, okay, they're cool. Maybe some loving, maybe some cool, maybe, you know, friendship. So we're like, okay, out of nowhere, how did we get a video of Duchess being jumped by corny a big Mexican enchilada tequila drinking? Mar Mariachi built bitch and two other bitches jumping Duchess. Huh? It's what? What? Where have that come from? But we've seen it on tonight's finale though. So, leading up to the black, leading up to Puma being slammed on the floor, we're going to start there. That is what this all combustion that's come come to. Which we I blame Puma. Puma started it. Because even after y'all have made amends, Puma still comes into the situation, disrespect this man in his place, saying this and that about him. And then when the situation gets handled and the situation has gone from zero to a hundred and he actually leaves and you disrespect him, Puma, by dropping a half bitten piece of lemon pepper juicy ass chicken and I need it right now because I'm starving. On a newly renovated shop in floor. You deserve to get your ass WWE slammed on the goddamn floor because you had that shit coming and you let them all your skinny, crack-headed, nappy-headed ass got. Okay. In that situation. But okay. It escalated. You, you did what you had to do. It was done what it had to be done, and what was did was did, and can't be undone. Signed, sealed, delivered. I'm not sure. But, a hand of business shit was still offered when we asked you to be a part of Black Ink Magazine. Okay, you don't want to be a part of Black Ink um, Magazine. You were part of another uh, magazine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which you um. Quanti did and Sassy, which was nice. Then the situation was calling a making a situation, which I understood where Quanti was coming from. But bitch, it ain't that motherfucking serious, and you already know that situation what was it what it was. So you crying and doing all this, girl, quit it, stop it, ratatize it, bury it, sign, seal, deliver it. I'm not sure. Bury that shit six feet under and put flowers on it and leave. Because the situation wasn't what it was. So, after, and she's talking about after the altercation, no bitch, the altercation was your, your husband's fault. You acting like they was coming there on some Suge Knight, Tupac, Biggie type shit. No bitch, they was coming there to your apartment. To speak with Puma, not to do, not, I mean, girl, like, this situation was taken to a whole other situation that it did not even need to be taken to, all because something was misconstrued, okay? Puma wasn't there, so we don't know what they did. All he's gonna go off is what his wife said. 
And the reason why you feeling that way and this and that other, they was not coming there to do what you thought they were coming there to do. Puma was not there. You acting like they was bad bitch open the door. Where the fuck is Puma? Where my money at? This, that, and the other. Bitch, he spoke respectfully and highly. Well, you told him Puma was not there. He said, okay, can you tell him Big C, C's and Big Joe's by? He said, okay. Wow, if you want to come out like you can just sniff some boogie sugar and come out there acting a damn fool, want to go to this man's business acting a punk fool. So, girl, like, <laughs> just sit down. Then, you go to this counselor that says, oh, they came to my house and they did this to Puma. I'm scared for my daughter. I'm coming out with Mason and the Blade. Bitch, shut that shit motherfucking down. Because, like I said before, it is not that serious. Yes, I understand how you kind of feel. I kind of got that effect of how it could have been that way. But you knew it wasn't that way. So, why take th why you take that? And then, with that situation in the hand. Okay, you know that Puma had a situation. So, you didn't have a situation with C's. You know, you did you have a situation with Duchess or Big Joe. Why you can go down to uh, C's and talk and ask him why he was at his door? Why, why was they at your door? Or was the situation what the situation was? But you want to take the situation to a whole new situation. Oh, oh, damn, they got your baby daddy fucked the fuck up. Because C's was not playing a motherfucking game. And we're going to get to that fight now. Steve has been has been invited, and they're gonna go and support Walter and walking in the show. But Walter did not know that Pum was walking in the show, so he's like, "Damn, I know everybody ain't getting along, but this is the night we should all get along. We should be able to walk in the same building." Okay, cool. We all grown folks. We may not be, but we should be able to sit in the same building and be cool. Okay, Duchess and Steve got there late. Okay, pop. Everybody's coming out, walking. Okay. Now, Puma trying to be all big and bad. And let me go down Puma's history of trying to be big and bad. He got his ass whooped every time he was in an altercation. So we already know that Puma was not finna win this fight. So, Puma being big and bad, trying to be big and bad, and come out of a sick night. This shows you how unprofessional this nigga is. You just got through walking a big show that you've been invited to walk. New York Fashion Freaking Week. And you come out of business mode. Come out of an engagement over somebody who's not even worried about you. Hey, nigga, what's up, nigga? What's up? We're talking all that shit. What's up? You came to my house. What's up? What's up? Plex up and you never even made it to see. That's my point. If you're ready to plex up, if you, if you really want that nigga that bad, Fuck security, fuck the niggas on the street, I don't need no crew, I'm rolling solo, I'm ready to get. You never even made it to see. You got your whole crew behind you like they gonna do something, but in the end, you got this big bitch pulling down judges and you got two other bitch, you, you and another bitch kicking her. But you ain't do no motherfucking damage, bitch. If you gonna jump a bitch, cause you know they gonna retaliate, right? If you gonna jump a bitch. If you're going to plex up, if you're going to jump, if you're going to pop off and then not jump off, bitch, do some damage, okay? Do some motherfucking damage and not just fuck up a bitch bun, okay? I mean, Dutch was already looking raggedy at the situation anyway, so you really didn't do that much. So I hope you're not on Instagram bragging, Kwani, with your scary ass and pulling with your no fighting ass. Y'all both fucking scary. That's why y'all married. Y'all deserve the fuck out of each other because you're scary. And then, Puma, I, just like Teddy said, you know what, and then, now I'm saying that the rest of the crew agree, so now they, everybody's on one accord that Puma is the problem, and Puma is not really what the fuck he is. He ain't even a real nigga at this point because you got your crew behind you. They getting they ass whooped because C's is still enough for all of them. Walt is fighting and Teddy is fighting. Your whole crew got their ass up and Puma. Bitch, Puma never got touched at all. Puma still dressed in what he had on for walking in the fashion show. Not a wrinkle on his body. And your whole crew got their ass fucked off over you trying to be buck. Just like Teddy said, the next day I would have I told Puma ass 
up. Bitch, I got a black eye and got my lip buttons and got my teeth knocked out because of you. And you didn't come in with a, a, a scar, a wrinkle, or not even dirt. And then the bitch tried to put, pick up a bottle. A bottle. You can't use your hands. You come out here hard as hell, but you're going to pick up a bottle. How weak are you? You weak and you don't deserve it. Nothing at all. This review is over. That has been Black Inclusive, the finale. I will catch you back on BH1 next week for Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Follow me on our social media sites. Like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Jay Durrell. Follow me and subscribe to it. LOL is Jay Durrell. I'm getting that set up right after this video. I'm getting ready to post, edit, so stay tuned. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. Leave your thoughts and comments about the ninth episode. Down below.